One of them is my friend Megan Kelly, who joins us now from New York. She's kicking off a new podcast. Uh, of course, she's not with Fox these days. She was there for about 13 years, did five presidential debates, has interviewed every who's who on the international stage in the last 15 or 20 years, a world-renowned jur- journalist, but also just a great lady. Hey, Megan, how are you? Hey, Dave, I'm great. How are you? It's an honor to have you. Thanks for hanging out with us today for a little bit. So a new p- is all mine. So a new podcast. Way to go. How fun is this? You know what? This is the place to be for me because I'll tell you, having worked for a brief stint at ABC, 13 and a half at Fox, and then another brief stint at NBC, I have realized, number one, I'm no good with bosses. I, I can't be working for a boss anymore, Dave. It hasn't worked out so well. And number two, I just need to go someplace where I can say what I want to say. I'm, yeah. I'm like, like a lot of Americans, I'm just, I'm sick of being told what I can and cannot say, think, be, do. So I love the idea of just going to this alternate universe where I, I can say whatever the heck I want to say. You know, yeah. you don't like it, you don't have to listen. You like it, stay with me. Yeah, that's the reason the Dave Ramsey Show is the largest syndicated talk radio show in America that's not corporate owned. I own it. It's It's called the Dave Ramsey Show, and so I get to say what I want to say because I freaking own it, and if you don't want to listen, you can go somewhere else. I've been saying that for 20 years. It's fun. You're going to like it. (laughs) Well, honestly, and to your point, Dave, like when I was coming up with, you know, what I wanted to do and how it would look, I had a lot of offers for investments, right? Like, uh, I'll I'll, I'll pay for the whole thing as long as I can have this percentage, and in the end, I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm doing it myself. I'm going to self-fund this thing. We'll start small. We'll build from there if we do well. But I want to own it because I don't want anyone telling me what I what I can and cannot say. I've had too many years of that, and it's just it's not the wave of the future, especially now with the total collapse of media. Yeah, yeah, and it, they just are uh, falling all over themselves. The um, but what's interesting? I'm uh, you've already put a couple of episodes in the can, and so um, see if you've had this experience. What's interesting is is the um, the percentage of what you wanted to say that you. Did, that you were told not to say or told to say or something like that, it's very small. It's just aggravating. Yes. In other, well, in other know, words, you're gonna, we're going to get like 99% the Megyn Kelly we already know. That's absolutely right. But the thing is, like, political bias pushes you one way or another when you're in what you know they call legacy media now, right? And that's true at Fox, and it's definitely true at the other networks, even more so. Um, I would say Fox was the most open-minded to letting me say what I wanted to say within certain bounds. Um, and then the pressure is enormous elsewhere to, to be, you know, one way or another. And I try to resist it as best I could, but at those big networks, you only have so much control over the final product because it's like working for a newspaper, the editors get their hands on it and then it's no longer your product. So I'm, I'm sick of that. But more than that, you know, our country is getting to this weird place where you can't discuss sensitive issues openly and freely. It's basically just agree with my point of view or you're terrible. Or, yeah, and you're canceled. Adopt- you're terrible, and yeah, I'm going to cancel you. Yeah, you're a bigot. You're a transphobe. You're a xenophobe. You're a sexist. You're all the phobes, and stop talking. And that, that's just no way forward. We have to be able to talk about everything. It's un-American to be stifling people. And now you're getting the people, you know, around dinner parties, starting to whisper their thoughts to you. And I'm thinking to myself, what is this, East Germany? Why don't you just, like speak up? And now more than ever, people do need to speak up because I think we're being we're sick of being shamed into submission yeah. on things that are dicey and complicated and require complex thought and, and idea exchanges. Well, the interesting thing is when you actually can have a discussion without screaming or yelling with, with someone that has a brain that disagrees with you, you end up learning something. But when you completely, yeah, when you completely do away with that, what was the phrase? That was a good phrase. Shamed into submission. Yeah. Silence and submission, because you know what's happening is first sort of the mob wants to silence you. Then they want to, that you to submit, right, to sort of bow. And then what really happens is you need to join them. It's not, actually not enough just to be neutral. Now no, you need to and, join And here's the them. problem. I was, I was just preparing a talk I'm giving this week and this morning, uh, yesterday afternoon. And the problem is even if you acquiesce, even if you go along with all of it, there's one little tiny sliver that they still get pissed off about. You can't make these people happy. Absolutely right. There's, it's funny because this one woman who works in one of my doctor's offices, she is a lesbian. She's got the tattoos. She's got the piercings. She marches against Trump every other weekend. She's very woke, very woke. And she was on some website, and yeah, I used a term like she uh, guessing about somebody, and she started to get shamed. How do you know it's a she? How dare you presume the pronoun? 
And she basically looked at this group and she was like, look, I do enough. <laughs> I'm totally woke. Leave me alone. <laughs> right, but there is no amount of wokeness for the woke. And That's I think right. the person was just sick of it. It's like, come on, you're a good human being. Just get off of it. It's yeah. the, the, the least, jag- uh, least generous lens used on every human being. And it's just not the way we are. We actually have real problems we need to be focused on, not this nonsense. So the new podcast, The Megan Kelly Show, and I assume you've got it on all the platforms. I do. And if you're anything like my mom, not you, Dave, but any of your listeners, um, you got to go to the app, the app store mm-hmm, <laughs> on, mm-hmm. uh, on Apple, mm-hmm. type in podcasts, mm-hmm. and then just download that button. And then once you've got the podcast button on your phone, you type in Megan Kelly and I'll come up. That's simple. My okay. mom's like, I don't even know what that is, a podcast. How do I even get that on my phone? I'm like, Mom, I will send you an iPhone yeah. with a little button already on it. Yeah, well, she, once she gets addicted, though, she'll be on, I mean, my wife is a podcast fanatic, and, and never listens oh. to me, of course, but she's a podcast fanatic, Yeah, so, yeah, it, it's a- uh, Totally it, catchy. Yeah, it's really, really a big deal. Very cool. So you got our friend Ben Shapiro on one of the first episodes, I see. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He's one of the reasons I'm doing this. I know Ben well and, and have been friends with him for a long time. I was actually one of the first people to put him on TV, on The Kelly File, and people were like- he, got, he talks really fast, and he's really incendiary, and he's really young. And I was like, shut up, he's a star. And he's and so he, he freaking smart. He's so smart. So smart. He actually is the smartest guy in the room. You know how most people yeah. think they are? Yeah. He, he really is. And he's so smart, he's not even self-deprecating about it. He's like, yeah, I am, and I know I am. <laughs> <laughs> but, but anyway, so he called me up about a year, a year ago, and he was like, listen, MK, I don't know what you're doing next, but consider this podcast world. And I didn't really know much about it. I, at that point, I'd only been listening to, like, Dateline, which I highly recommend, by the way. Just falling asleep to the sounds of murder is very soothing. <laughs> um, but he was telling me That's how it, it could be made into a viable business for news. And kind of walked me through it, and I went out there. I met with him and his partner, Jeremy Boring, his business yep. partner. And uh, mm-hmm. they helped me a lot. So they're one of the reasons I'm into this now. Yeah. Met in the cigar room with the dog. That's right. Yeah, That's right. been in the, been in that, that room myself. Through. Yeah, it, but that and, room's and gone. He's, he's my really neighbor now. Up. He and Jeremy are moving to Nashville. You know what? And who could blame them? Yeah. They're they're having the same situation in L.A. that I'm having on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. Yeah, it's just not what it used to be. <laughs> you think? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. So they yeah they got out of California and are setting up shop here as our neighbors. I've been in touch with them and we're friends as well so i'm excited to have you for you to have him as one of your first guests and then the second uh is with hugh hewitt huh hugh hewitt came on to talk about the presidential debate last week and we had glenn greenwald who is he's a lefty but he's unconventional like you don't you never know where he's coming at things from um dropped an episode with ted cruz but i just dropped one yesterday or no sorry today with Adam Carolla, which I have to say, I absolutely love. I, I hope people go listen to this because it's all about cancel culture. Mm. And Adam is like a savant on that stuff. And he yeah. made that movie, No Safe Spaces. Guy knows what he's talking about. Well worth a listen. Megan, we're proud for you. Be praying for your new show, The Megan Kelly Show, where great podcasts are found. Good luck and God's blessings. Thanks, Dave. Right back at you.